The Fae, Tinkerbell from Hell. Honestly, I didn't think I'd enjoy The Fae because she's a support caster and I don't traditionally enjoy these roles. If you've seen my guide for other heroes that are supports or tanks, you'll know that I always build to their role. So for like a tank we'll get armor and for a support we'll get cooldown reduction, mana and so on. But with The Fae I tried something different and surprisingly it was not only a great build but I enjoyed playing a role I never really liked before. So if you're a typical carry or caster type of player, definitely give this build to go because you're in for a surprise. So I build Faye with the majority of my points going into damage because this little girl definitely packs a punch. The growth affinity is awesome because we can get some armor and damage at the same time through snakevine mesh and venom shell and then we get some health and mana along with our wards of course. Start off with your prime card the Arc Magus. Throw in your double cast token, yes I finally got those bastards, a health potion, mana potion, scout's ward and blink charm. Now blink charm is there if you're having trouble dealing with ganks. I don't really get it too often but if the enemy team has two fighters like Chimera and Grux, blink charm will definitely save you a lot, especially in the early game. Add in an amp crystal with two casts and a mana, this will give you a decent sized mana pool at 60 card points. Throw in two Solaris reactors with 1, 2, 3 cast upgrades. If you don't have minor casts, you can always build 3 casts on each. I like Solaris reactors on the Fey because the mana regen is really nice. I can rotate, use all my abilities and then when I get back to lane I've already got quite a bit of my mana back. Add in your Sage's ward because wards save lives and at the end of the day even though we'll probably rack up more kills than an ADC, as a support caster it's our job to have wards throughout the entirety of the game. Add in 3 health and a cast to upgrade your stage's ward. Finally, the reason I love the growth affinity, add in snake vine mesh with 3 greater barriers or beta barriers, they are the same thing and throw in a major cast. Do the same for venom shell with 3 greater guards and a major cast. So you'll notice that I skipped 2 cards at the start, snake vine mesh and venom shell, these are flexible cards so if you ever face a team with all physical damage then there's no need to waste points on energy armor so you can just equip a second venom shell instead of a snake vine mesh or vice versa. Throw in a beta barrier, beta guard and 2 major casts as these will allow you to fill the card you need if you do choose to go for double snake vine or venom shell. One thing I'm not too sure on and I'm pretty much still undecided on this is whether I should just build more mana instead of mana regen so maybe it's worth trying the build out with amp crystals. I did this but I still favoured solaris reactors over the amp crystal. I do like the fact that I don't have the back for mana in the late game and while the mana regen amount is not a lot it's enough especially with her E ability refunding mana. The math says that mana regen is not worth it but I liked having the regen and we aren't investing Investing many points into it anyways. Now as with pretty much any build in Paragon the build order changes depending on the game but the best build order for this deck in my opinion goes something like this. Throw in a health potion and double cast token. This will allow you to get lots of last hits and reach 6 card points very quickly. You can get a scout's ward if you feel like you're gonna get ganked a lot. Remember ward saved lives and there's no harm in spending 1 point on a scout's ward in the early game. Once you have 6 card points to spend, buy your Sage's Ward and a Solaris Reactor. Max out your Solaris Reactor and then start work on your second Solaris Reactor. You can see now why we didn't take a Mana Potion. Next you can go for your Armor or Amp Crystal. I like to get one Armor type that counters the most deadly hero on the field and then build my Amp Crystal but if you want you can build both Armor types before your Amp Crystal. I go for my Snake Vine Mesh, maxing that out and then start working on my Amp Crystal. Once I've maxed my Amp Crystal I add in my Venom Shell, finish that off and max out my Sage's War to complete the build. When you buy upgrades for your Snake Vine Mesh and Venom Shell, the choice is up to you whether you want to go all armor or get some extra damage. It really depends on how you're doing in the game. I personally like to go for the extra damage because I feel with the health from the Sage's Ward and the protection we already have, we should be okay. The Fae has a great kit, the slow from her bramble patch is really good for ganking, escaping tricky situations or lining up heroes for a wombo combo. Her harvest nettles also does a nice amount of damage and you get the full cost of it back if you land it on an enemy hero which is also a good bonus. Flytrap is a great ultimate and you can combo this ability really well with other heroes and your own abilities but it's also great for pulling heroes under your tower, stopping them from escaping or even to allow your allies 
allies to escape. Her untamed growth does a good amount of AoE damage and gives her the ability to solo lane. And when you put all of this together with the build, you get some truly wonderful results. I think it's about that time we start talking about some gameplay. The Fae, like I mentioned, is really good at laning. She can definitely hold her own. With the damage from the build, you'll have no trouble farming for card points, but she's also great at doing a lot of damage very quickly. I come from the jungle into the middle lane for a 1v1 against Murdoch. I land my slow first, followed up by my tamed growth and then E ability, which gets him really low. Even if Chimera didn't come in, I would have killed him as I could have used my ult in the worst case. The key part here is the order in which I use the abilities. I use my slow to guarantee that Murdoch spends a decent amount of time in my untamed growth. Had I used my untamed growth first, he could have simply walked out and even then I was relying on me hitting my slow when he knew I was there. It's best to use the slow when they can't see you and combo it like I did. Remember to use your E ability as this basically costs you nothing if you land it. I hope this gives you an idea of just how much damage the Fae can do and we're not even at full build yet. Laning against the Fae comes with a whole host of consequences, like the fact that you push up an inch too far, you better believe I'm gonna punish you. Before Iggy can even react, I throw down a slow as my teammates come charging in. I use my ultimate to ensure that he can't escape, and then with the help of my allies, we secure yet another very easy kill. That all started because of the Fae's crazy range on her slow ability, and the fact that her ult will pull people right back into it means that Iggy had no chance of escaping. A similar thing happens with Murdoch. Several lands a great route and pushes him back from out the tower. I throw down my ultimate to make sure he doesn't escape and we guarantee the kill. That's what I mean by her abilities combo well with others. And just because we built damage doesn't mean we can't support our allies. Chimera decides to engage Feng Mao, so I guess that we're fighting this as the enemy team begin to collapse on us. Iggy uses his ult on me, but the armor I have is enough to keep me comfortably alive. I throw down my ult to help Chimera escape, and then I slow the enemy team to give him the chance to get away, and he does just that. Is there anything the Fae can't do? I mean we chase Twimblast, an ADC in the late game, whom we're supposed to be afraid of. We slow him, land the ultimate and set up another easy kill for Chimera. Even the Muriel ultimate couldn't save him. Sometimes you'll hear me say do not engage in the jungle against certain heroes, but Faye is one of those heroes that actually thrives in the jungle because of how narrow the paths are. My team are fighting in the jungle, I throw down my ultimate, catching Iggy and Murdoch, and with a follow up from my team there is nothing they can do as we clear 4 enemies with ease. These are the kind of opportunities you want to look for. Anything with AoE damage on top of the Faye's ult is likely going to result in you winning that team fight. With regards to abilities, I actually really like all of them and I find it difficult to prioritize which one I should upgrade since it really depends on the situation. If I'm tasked with solo laning and there isn't many teamfights happening, I'll focus on my AoE, Untamed Growth. But if there are teamfights taking place, I'll also work on my slow quite a bit as well. I also do like Phase E since upgrading it increases the damage, so I'd honestly say take what works for you. But if you are laning, definitely favour your AoE over your other abilities. I think I've pretty much covered everything. Of course you can build the Fae as a support, but I really hate not having the ability to impact the game and relying on others. I mean solo queue as a support is honestly a nightmare. I hope that you guys enjoyed this build as much as I did though. It's probably my most favourite build I've done so far. Until next time guys, take it easy.